嗨，大家好，我是来自英国的戴淑仙。Today we're talking about the similarities and differences between spoken English and spoken Chinese. There are certain things that you need to pay close attention to when learning English as a Mandarin speaker, as opposed to someone whose native language is Spanish or Russian, and so on. Here, I'll introduce nine differences I've noticed, and at the end, I'll share why I speak with a Taiwanese accent. Firstly, grammar is an obvious difference between English and Chinese. As you know, there aren't really tenses as such in Chinese, and the verb always stays the same. For this reason, when learning English, tenses are something you have to consciously focus on. Present simple isn't actually used that often in English because it really depends on your meaning and what you're talking about. So if you find you're using present simple tense a lot, think again and check whether you're using the right tense. There are twelve tenses in total, and they're an ongoing challenge for learners of English, no matter how advanced you are. As this course is focusing on developing a British accent, we won't look at tenses here. But they are a really important part of sounding like a native. I talk about them a lot in my group tutorials and subscription program, so you can check those out for more information. The next obvious difference is tones. In Mandarin, you have four tones, but in English, different words don't have different meanings depending on their tone. However, the meaning of the whole sentence does change depending on your intonation. We'll come back to English intonation in Unit Five, and we'll also look at stress because not all words are emphasised equally in English, and this is very important. Now, if we get a bit more technical, there's something called phonotactics, which refers to what types of sounds are allowed in different languages. In Chinese, consonants usually don't appear together. For this reason, when learning English, Chinese speakers often drop the second consonant. Because that feels natural for them to do. This can happen whether the consonant cluster is at the beginning of a word, the middle of a word, or the end of a word. Here are some examples of the stereotypical Chinese way of pronouncing the word: tooth, ashen, squip. To sound more natural, try focusing on pronouncing the consonants: truth, truth. Action, action. Script, script. Another habit is for Mandarin speakers to add an extra vowel sound to break up consonant sequences, like this. This aside. Bus stop. Think of fast. Try not to add an extra sound here. This side. Bus stop. Think fast. This side. Bus stop. Think fast. So not think a fast, but think fast. L sounds at the end of words are also often turned into vowels by many Mandarin speakers. This word might be pronounced like "fu," and this one might be "o." That's because the L is turned into a vowel. With "old," the last consonant also gets dropped accidentally. In English, it's like this: full, old, full, old. Another habit is to remove the voicing from final consonants. For example, Chinese speakers might say "lif," "cap," "tight." Instead, add more sound from your voice box: "live," "cab," "tide," "liv," "cab," "tide." You should be able to feel some vibration here at the end of the words. Next, Asian speakers often have problems pronouncing R's and L's, especially if the sound comes in the middle of a word. They might mix them up. 
Try saying this tongue twister. A bowl of freshly fried flying fish. A bowl of freshly fried flying fish. A bowl of freshly fried flying fish. Okay, let's try saying a sentence. Can you say this out loud? Some key parts to remember here are the consonants. The G at the end of speaking, the L in English, the R in practice, and the C before the T. So instead of speaking English is easy when you practice, you can say speaking English is easy when you practice. Speaking English is easy when you practice. OK， 现在呢，我想做一个比较概括性的语言比较。我说中文时候，你应该可以看我的嘴巴动的比较少，嘴唇的动作相对比较小。But in English, the lips move more freely and openly. 另一个差异是汉语的发音更紧凑一点，听起来像是在头部的高位位置发出。这也与嘴巴在发音时嘴巴肌肉比较紧有关。But in English, the sounds are deeper, more open, and more freely flowing. 但是这个差异在美式英文不是那么明显的，因为美式英文通常也是在喉咙比较高的位置发音。If you listen to American people speaking, you'll actually hear that their accent is more nasal, which means it sounds almost like the sounds are coming out of their nose and not their mouth. But with the British accent, the mouth is usually much more open and relaxed, meaning the sounds seem deeper. 所以我们可以看到，美式英文与中文是比较相似的口音，但是英式口音的嘴巴位置则有点不一样。同时，也要看是哪个地区的口音强调。北京的中文跟美式英语一样，更有鼻音，带有强烈的二音。因此，作为一个英文人，我发现台湾腔的中文更容易学习，因为英国口音和台湾口音都没有强烈的二音。接下来是关于母音的发音。像我已介绍过，英式与美式英文的母音发音有不一样的差异，而且这也是最大的差异之一。如果你听我说中文，也许你可以听到它就像子音带入下一个声音，所以听起来很强调子音。外国人听中文时会听到中文使用者很重子音的发音。British English is different because there's more emphasis on the vowels. It's like the vowels are carried into the next sound. They resonate more. 你是不是听过外国人是这样说中文呢 ？They emphasize the vowels just like in their mother tongue. 相反的，你说英文时应该可以多注重于母音，让你的嘴巴打开多一点。虽然一开始会有一点怪怪的感觉，但是如果你是这样模仿母语者说话，你会慢慢的比较自然的跟他们一样说话。Let's practice some sentences together. Try saying this sentence out loud. As I said in previous points, we do need to remember the end consonant sounds, but the emphasis actually goes on the vowels, not the consonants. You might be tempted to emphasize the consonants, like this: I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. Actually, it's the vowels that should ring forward. I don't know what I'm going to do. Hear the depth? I don't know what I'm going to do. By the way, single t's at the end of words in English often get dropped and blend into the next word, like in "don't know," no t, "don't know." Notice as well how differently the o's are pronounced: "don't," "going," "o," and "do," "oo." There's more variation with the vowel sounds in British English compared with American English, as we said before in lesson one. Try saying this sentence out loud. Let's face it, we're never going to get there. Hear how the vowels ring out. Let's face it, we're never going to get there. Let's face it, we're never going to get there. Okay, so those are my tips for how to sound more British, specifically for you Mandarin speakers. I hope you enjoyed this class, and I'll see you in the next one for lots of speaking practice.